Ivy with Women for One and I'm here today in June of 2015 in the Pacific Northwest and very, very excited to be speaking with uh, my new friend Elisa Romeo who is an author and an intuitive and a licensed marriage and family therapist and a speaker. Her private practice, which grew by word of mouth, which is my favorite way of growing, consists of thousands of worldwide clients. In her work with clients, she merges a background in depth psychology with the ability to directly communicate with the soul. Elisa's new book, Meet Your Soul, A Powerful Guide to Connect with Your Most Sacred Self, is published this year by Hay House, and her mission is to remind us to listen to the guidance and the power and the love of our inner soul voice, which I just love. Um, she's known for speaking the language of the soul with humility, humor, and grounded candor, and I'm really honored to speak with you today, Elisa, and have our community get to know you more, so welcome. Thanks, Kelly. I'm so excited to talk with you. Yes, definitely. So I'd like to start out with, um, because Women for One is about sharing experiences and journey, can you tell a little bit ab about yourself and how you came to where you are now with what you do in the world and also a little bit about your personal life for our community? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so... You know, I grew up in a house where my dad was a biochemist, my mom was a mathematician, so very analytical, head-oriented, you know, nothing exists if you can't prove it. And I was like this little mystic having these kind of bizarre experiences. My first out-of-body experience was in Montessori at six years old where we were relaxing to classical music. <laughs> I had a little out-of-body experience, and then when we came back in the circle and talked about it, I said, what I saw, and everybody was like, what? And that was my first realization. Maybe this isn't so normal and kind of not cool to talk about out loud. <laughs> yeah. I kind of, you know, didn't talk about those things that much and um, and was actually pre-law uh, when I was going to university, started University of Washington. And um, But then I had my own kind of medical healing through um, a woman where I had a wart on my knee and I shaved it and it spread to like 40 warts and I felt like a leper and I got oh. it burned over and over at the doctor and um, they're like, you're going to have these burns for the rest of your life. It's just, this is the situation. So out of desperation, I went back to this woman that I knew um, who did hands-on healing and I didn't know anything about that. And then over at her house, I had a full-on shamanic experience going to the lower world, meeting my power animal. And I was crying because I had never heard of anything like that. So my ego was pretty terrified. And then I spoke all these stories, and each wart was a trauma held in my body that I needed to release the story of. And the next day, the warts were gone, and then in a couple weeks, the third-degree burns were gone. Wow. So I was like, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm, I want, and I started training with her. Um, and so I started to learn to see energy field, and I'd be at University of Washington watching my professors just staring at their aura and trying to figure out what was happening and starting to integrate those two worlds together. And, and things just kept ramping up. So in my kind of physical world reality, I was started to think, okay, I want to be a therapist. I want to work with people on their personal things. But then my inner world is all these things still going on. And so it led me on a path to go to Pacifica Graduate Institute in California, which is a union depth psychology school, and started to learn to become a therapist and meditating a lot on my own. And then my goal was to bridge them, psychology and spirituality, and, and that's what I do now. I work with people around the world that call me, and we do sessions where it's kind of depth psychology influence, but it's really out of the scope of that and that the goal is where people begin to connect to their soul and start to hear the voice of their intuition really, really clearly so that they can surrender their life to that power and energy instead of what the ego wants to do. Hmm. Interesting. That's, that's really powerful work. Do you find that to be work that reflects also your own work in your life um, personally? Do you notice that a lot, that it improves? Oh, yeah. Like, I could not navigate the world if I hadn't had my own... Well, when I was at Pacifica Graduate Institute, I had a, the 
kind of the biggest experience that is the root of all my work, where I left my body and I joined with my soul. And so I could see my physical body down below me, and then I went up into this beautiful love field and then merged with it. And I could remember why I incarnated, why I came to the planet. I chose my parents, what issues we were working on on the soul level, and the fact that I came here to remind people of the reality of their souls, which is that all loving part of yourself you're going to go back to after you die and she understands every issue in your life she knows why every soul lesson set up and she knows how you can effectively kind of master that lesson so to me it's just going directly to the source teaching people how to usually most of the stuff i do in meet your soul is talking about journaling so how you can start to have a dialogue between your ego and soul to bridge that vibrational gap and you learn instead of channeling spirit guide or another entity you're channeling your soul your highest self your authentic individuated self so i use it all the time i mean we picked carpet cleaners this week for the house i'm talking to my soul which one is going to be the best on our carpet or i use it for the most mundane things to the most serious and sacred spiritual type of topic so so see my soul she's my bff she's who i go to for everything so anything you know parenting issues what's going on with my son how can I most help him right I'm going up to her to get her perspective the bigger picture of of the best way to navigate that topic well okay so um I have so many questions as you're talking which I'm really excited to have this conversation with you about um but first let's get into the book in general uh because I really want to for you to kind of set up the context for Meet Your Soul, A Powerful Guide to Connect. I really love this book. It has such incredible information in it. Can you talk a little bit about the premise of the book and also how it can support and help people and in what ways? I feel like, honestly, this book can help everybody, no matter where you're at. A lot of people think, I have to be special, I have to be psychic, oh, maybe you do that, but I can't do that. But what I found consistently over and over in sessions is anyone can do this. It starts like fake it till you make it. At first, your ego might not believe it's happening, but as you learn to consistently change your brain state from beta to theta, which happens through the meditations and the inquiries that I have in the book, you learn how to navigate oh, that's my ego talking, oh, that's an inner sabotaging voice like a gremlin. Maybe it's like, you know, the voice that was passed you from your mother or your great-grandma or something that is like the inner critic. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, that's my soul. And you learn to judge because the energy from your soul is always loving and always just like incredibly compassionate to the ego journey and that's what I love about talking to the soul as opposed to talking to other spirit guides or whatever is nobody knows better than yourself your highest self like the perfect thing to say to help your ego get a step up closer to her and the soul is so incredibly just genius at how she'll like tell you exactly what you need to know in the next sentence you know to help you get relief, comfort, and just clarity, and, and also stay connected to her. So, and there's different ways to do it. You can do it through the journaling. You can do it through meditation, where you're imagining her coming into your body as a color and cleaning out any other energies or fear, trauma, anxiety. And you can get immediate relief from that. And so, for me, I found you know in my therapy practice, I'm all for therapy. I think therapy is really important. But sometimes it only goes so far if the the root of the issue you're working on is energetic. Mm-hmm. And so the soul knows the difference there. Like I was working in a rehab um, in California and seeing teaching codependency course. You know, so of course there's like psychological issues there, like oh, well, I picked this up from, you know, my father and mother's relationship or whatever, and and you have to potentially psychoanalyze or look at those issues, but then sometimes it's just energetic. Like, sometimes it might be, yeah, I've talked about this for five years, but now I'm ready to cut the energy cord, move the energy out, call myself back with love, and then something you can do in five minutes can be incredibly powerful and save you years of work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... For me, it's not one or the other. It's kind of both. And my, you know, hope for the world is that all therapists learn to be a little more energetically savvy so that they can start to navigate 
the spiritual emergencies, spiritual openings, and and when something is another entity in someone's space and not something they need to psychoanalyze. Right, right. And, you know, I, I know in your book you talked about the soul really is only discoverable through direct experience and feeling and embodiment. Um, before we kind of get into a couple of questions I have around that, can you maybe expand on that quote? Because it really touched me when you said that in the book. Yeah, I mean, my soul, Sophia, was seriously <laughs> tough with me when I was writing this book. She's like, we don't need another book about concepts and beliefs in the right. world. We already have enough mental masturbation for eons. Yes. You know? What we need is to change people. We need to get it so that people are having their own empowered experience of spirituality where it's not some abstract concept in the front of their head or outside of their forehead, but it's like, I know this through my whole body. Every cell knows because I've had that personal and direct experience. And that's when we become empowered in terms of no one can control you, whether it's the media or politics or, you know, a boyfriend. If you have direct access to your soul, it kind of just like cuts through everything because you can go to the source. You can go to your source. And that is so empowering. That's what I want my kids to learn, you know? And you're talking about when you say to your soul, would, would you exchange that word with your intuition as well as long as it's your yeah, soul? Yeah, I think your intuition comes completely from your soul. To me, soul is a little bigger than just the word intuition because your soul also knows, and some people might say this about intuition, but your soul also knows what you've done in the past lives, has access to the Kashuk records, which is kind of like the energetic Google where you can type any question in and get that information. So it's a very psychic part of yourself and it's kind of a new concept to a lot of people to realize like we're multidimensional, that yeah, we're here in the 3D and our egos are chatting and having this conversation, but you and I are also talking on an energetic level. Our souls also have a plan for what was already going to happen in this conversation. Right, and, right. And right. starting to get aware of the different dimensions because um, that is so powerful and beautiful and then you start to feel meaning in life instead of things being random and haphazard it's like oh yeah and then you start to have these synchronicities those divine you know winks from the universe that are kind of plotting your path and you feel just protected and loved and held by the universe Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because I have somewhat of a different belief, but it, it's similar. So I want to kind of clarify. So my belief is that everything's happening right now, all of it, but our minds can't understand that. So I don't really believe in past lives, but I do. I think everything's happening in this moment. And I actually agree with you. I say past yeah. just because, you know, we have these linear minds and it's also our future lives are happening. Right, right. Are like, so what? everything. What? what are you talking about? But everything's like, happening. Yeah. At this moment. But we can't. It's hard for people to understand that, you know, the yeah. ego mind is like just focus on this linear time space reality. I, I completely agree. And on the same note, when you know we can have that peace with the fact that there is a divine plan, on the same note, like you and I were speaking before this call, the chaotic magnificence of there is a lot of chaos and there is darkness and light, and that our our small brains can't understand that, right? And that that we need to at least expand into connecting to that source so that we can move forward in understanding what we need to do as individual beings on this planet. Do you agree and with to that? Me, what we're doing in every lifetime, you know, whether here or there, the kind of goal is always the truth of the heart. So how do yep. I choose love? And and then and then it's like everybody says, that, okay, choose love over fear. What the heck does that mean? Right. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. And what it means is running the energy of your soul, that unique form and flavor of love that you are through your body so that your decisions on planet Earth are consistent with the bigger energy that you are. So that that's oh, what I found when I, I, love when I that. left my body. I and love my that. Soul, I was like, you know, in a physical world, love, I was like, yeah, I'm following my dreams. I'm being who I need to be. I'm a confident woman because I was, you know, going to grad school, following my dreams. But when I had my out-of-body experience, it was like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're being 2% of the 
of what we want you to be. Right. What we want you to be is like running the energy of that in every moment and not caught in your head in a plan or the right. po- like, you know, the more masculine kind of point A to point B, like goal, mm-hmm. but actually being that energy of love on the planet. And that I was terrified to do. That I didn't have courage. I didn't know how to do that. Right. Uh, yeah, I get that. I, I get that feeling as well because I've had that. It's like, how do you be instead of do? That's and what I hear. it's a challenge because it's like every moment's kind of a test. Like even in this exact moment, what percentage of my soul am I allowing to permeate, come through, come through my voice in this call? How much of me is connected to program beliefs, societal beliefs, parents, influences, whatever, that is fear and then dampening that energy. So, okay, and then the other thing is I had this experience, which I wanted to share with you and get your thoughts on, um, when I was in a healing school about eight years ago, and what my experience was is I always believed... You know how you say, you know, in your mind, you think your soul is separate and that you're, you know, you're like the houser of a soul. That's what I thought my whole life. And then I had this experience about eight years ago where every fiber of my being was my soul. Every single auric, like energy, everything, like literally, I talk about it now and I tingle all over. Yeah, and I, I realized, yeah. I realized, and it was funny because everybody's like, "What's going on with Kelly over there?" <laughs> and and my teacher said, "Leave her alone. She's having an experience." And uh, <laughs> but but what it did for me was shift my perception and my thought process around the soul being its own entity and knowing that it's it's part of my fiber. It's in me all over. I'm not encasing a soul. And I'm wondering what you think the value of something like that experience would, would be compared to understanding that, you know, you got to meet your soul. Do you know what I mean? It's separate. Right. So I conceptually agree with what you're saying, and I also have this other thing I want to say, so they're both kind of true to me. Everything about us is made up of our soul, and everything around us right. has the soul in it. So it's like, it's God, right? It's right. like, to me, the soul is the highest kind of individuated form of flavor before that oneness, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, like, when my dad died, he came back to me as a spirit and started talking to me. That's how I started talking to the other side. And right. he showed me when he crossed over, he was Nick Romeo, but he also was like a raindrop on the window going down to the puddle, you know, so then he kind of joined into the love, the collective unconsciousness where he could experience that type of state too, but he can still send his energy and does to me as Nick Romeo, mm-hmm. you know, so okay. it's fascinating how, how that happens. So I think what you felt is an incredible gift and it is the energetic truth behind everything. And the ego is kind of set up to be this little um, kind of like container that thinks it is in separate, you know? And so we have the free will from the ego standpoint in every moment to turn towards that energetic truth of the soul or to kind of turn away. And, and to, to me, then it's like a horse running out of control, you know, in its own direction, thinking it's doing good, but potentially just in a manic state. And that's a lot of people around us, you know, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. having an idea of chasing happiness or what it's going to be but when you don't have that relationship to the soul yes the ego is made of the soul but the ego also can be an amnesia about that fact and I talk about in my book I call that soulnesia right where you are disconnected from the energetic truth of what you are which of course yes we are made up of soul we wouldn't be here if we weren't you know but but she is not made up of us so do you see what I'm saying it's like we are the soul, but she is so much like more than the ego. Oh, and to me, okay. that's why I'm all about personifying it, you could say. But it is a different entity in the sense of like, I thought I was Lisa Romeo doing my cool thing on planet Earth. And then when I joined, I was like, oh, you are like a goddess in your own right who has so much more wisdom and knowledge and understanding than I knew about. And so <laughs> that's right. why I talk about it as another entity. Okay, that's she really is, helpful. She is me. It's not like another entity because I could feel it. You know, it's through my whole body. I knew it was me. I knew I was experiencing that. Right. What she knew, but I didn't know that until I left my body. Mm-hmm. Right. So, right. But so with every practice that I do in sessions and in Meet Your Soul is all about how do we, when we're, and I should add, because this will probably be clarifying, is when I came back into my body, there's this feeling like, no, 
<laughs> because I could feel I was getting dumber and dumber. <laughs> you know, it right. was like, oh my God, I'm going from this kind of knowing everything and feeling complete love to the trauma and drama of the physical world. And mm -hmm. I also knew I wanted to be here and I incarnated here for a reason. So I wasn't trying to just, you know, go back. But at the same time, it was kind of an, it led me into a little bit of an existential crisis for six months as I was, and I talked to other people who've had out of body experiences that have this homesick feeling like you know you now know consciously on an ego level what that is and so it's kind of a bummer because you're like i'm missing that and a lot of people around you might not be able to relate it. right to that feeling right right yeah definitely that is challenging i mean yeah, I've, I've done it so i get it i, I get yeah. <laughs> and i think more people have had that experience than even admit i think that, you i know, agree everyone is always like why do you do that's cuckoo and flaky and then they'll take me aside and start whispering about these crazy amazing mystical experiences they have happened to them one of my best friends was like that she was like i don't get what you do i don't know and and then she admitted to me when she accidentally fell off a train in poland that she had an out-of-body experience this incredible bliss moment of connection and and then and then it took me reflecting it to her like that's what i'm talking about <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah it's almost like a reframe of a perception because most of the people that i have in my life aren't quote spiritual you know right. in the in the conscious seeking mode they're really just incredible people that are living their lives with value and passion and so that's why when i'm talking about the book i i really what i love about the book is you know and talking to you is you're so grounded and clear you're not like let's just throw love at this situation and make it better there's some real tools that you have in this book that help people to understand their intuition and their soul and understand that that is really a guiding force and should be in everybody's life yeah there's tons of like business people rich bronson and steve jobs you know that were incredibly connected to their soul they probably wouldn't use that language and are you know but right. um yeah, I mean, any form of intuition. My dad, you know, his scientific career, he was completely using his intuition. He probably would never have used that word, you know? Well, it's cute because my husband's um, brother, my brother-in-law, he he's a neurosurgeon. And the other day, I guess it was like last year, he whispered to me, he's like, do you know, like, I hear things when, I, when I'm when i doing surgery on people of what to do and I listen to it. But, you know, it's like this, whis it's this whisper. And I don't understand that, you know, the shame around it. It feels almost like shame, like our society. It is shame and yeah. it's fear. I mean, we have lifetimes where most of us have in some way been persecuted for the outing of that. And I, even when I did my book reading my first one on Bainbridge Island where, you know, I lived in a small island. Everybody knew I was since I was little. And I've been out, you know, on YouTube <laughs> or, you know, on the internet. But I was terrified. I was shaking before I was like, I had to tell my body, like, you're not going to be burned at the stake. This is 2015. Like, you can say you talk to dead people and not get killed for it. You know, but my body still doesn't know if that's true. Isn't that amazing? Because the first time I did the very first session I did of the webinar we were speaking about around the spirituality, I had mm -hmm. the same experience. I had to call one of my guides and she had to ground me because I yeah. was freaking out. But, you know, yeah, because there's <laughs> real history there. I actually worked with a client this week who past life burning. I mean, it's not that long ago. This was happening on the planet and it's like for her it was like eczema and constant itching every time she wants to speak her truth like literally oh her gosh. body enacting the same burning experience wow <laughs> so it no. really manifests physically and yep. yes yes well so how can um people get in touch with you do you have any projects that are going on or speaking engagements that people can hear you at or download on yeah, your website my, um website has a whole bunch of free information blogs i've got a ton of free meditations that you can download and put on your ipod or whatever about how to ground how to run, meet your soul and then i've got three of the chapters for meet your soul free on there you can read and i'm doing an east west bookstore um, um, event in Seattle in September, which the information will be on my website. It'll be on so. our description as well for everyone. And everyone in local that follows Women for One, go to East West. I gave a workshop there last year. It's one of my favorite places. That would be awesome. 
to I'd see love you there. to meet you guys and let me know that you heard us here. Yes, it would be awesome. It would be great, and I hope I can come and see you speak. And that would be awesome. We can actually meet since we don't live too far yeah. apart. <laughs> Yes, maybe we can do dinner before or something. <laughs> yes, definitely. So I just want to thank you so much for writing this book and living your truth and your passion because it takes a lot of courage to do that, Alisa. And I'm just really excited to get to know you and um, continue working with you. So you there... too. I'm so great. You're, you have this amazing platform to inspire and um, promote these things that you believe in in the world. So thank you for doing that. Oh, wonderful. So everybody can get in touch with Alisa. I'll have all her information on this post and the interview and I will also be posting her book and where you can get it and buy it and just embrace it and let her know what you think about it. All right. Well, take care everyone. Thank you so much again, Lalisa. Thank you so much.